Welcome to part six of my Power Query tutorial series, where I'm focusing on how you use Excel Power Query to clean and wrangle your data specifically for advanced analytics inside of Excel. The subject of this particular video is working with nested tables of data in Power Query. And this is awesome. I use it all the time when I'm characterizing groups that are within my original transactional data for various types of characteristics. And then I join up those characteristics back to the original transactional data. And often what that does is ups the power of my advanced analytics a lot. So let's just go ahead and jump right into Excel and get started. Per the usual, here I am in the associated Excel file for this video. If you're interested in getting this Excel file, check out the description below the video. That'll take you to a GitHub where you can download this file. Now, where we ended up at the end of part five was we were building a new query in Power Query to take this table of data and to group it, essentially to pivot it by ticket number and then create characteristics associated with each ticket group. So let's go ahead and continue that work using the nested tables that we left off with in the last video. And of course, what we do is we head up to the ribbon, we click on data, and then we click query and connections. And as we left off on part five of the video, we've got this ticket group query right here. And what we're gonna do is right click on it and select edit. And that will open up the query in the Power Query Editor. And just to refresh your memory, we have this passenger column left over from part five of the tutorial series. And this thing is awesome. So I use nested tables all the time when working with Power Query for exactly what I'm gonna demonstrate in this video. So if you recall, we had this row of data right here, which had four passengers associated with this ticket number. Now, if I click here, not on table, see how I turn into a little hand here? You don't wanna click on the table. Click in the space right here to the right of table. And if I click on that, and I'll just bring this up so you can see it a little bit better, you can see that what I get is the original four rows of data associated with this ticket number. And this is awesome because what I can do is scroll over here and I can see here, look at the new titles, right? So these, these titles come from an earlier video in the series where we collapse down all of the titles that we saw on the passengers in the Titanic into four buckets, Mrs. Miss, Mr. or Master. And what we would like to do is take advantage of this data and then add the counts of the individual titles to each row. So for example, in this particular case, the ticket number in question had one master, two miss, one misses, and no mister. And we would like basically four columns of information for each ticket group with the count of the titles. And that can be immensely interesting for our data analyses. And the awesome thing is, is that using a table column like this in Power Query makes this super, super easy. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do that. In Power Query, when you're working with a column that has tables of data in the cells, these are typically referred to as nested tables. And there are many, many ways to work with nested tables in Power Query. What I'm gonna demonstrate in this video is the overwhelming way I have used nested tables in Power Query for my advanced analytics scenarios. But rest assured that there's many, many ways to work with nested tables and you can check YouTube for some other tutorials on that. But this is how I typically do it. So first up, what we're going to do is click on the passengers column. We're going to transform it. So that means we need to go up to transform in the ribbon here, click on that. And what we're going to do is we're going to expand this column because we have embedded tables, nested tables of data, and we need to expand it first so we can work with the data. So when I click on this, I'm gonna get a dialog that asks me, hey Dave, how do you want to expand the passengers column? So the first thing is, I don't want a prefix, so I'm gonna delete this. And the next up, I don't want to expand all the columns because remember, I'm only interested in the new title column. That's all I'm interested in right now. So I unselect this, and then I just scroll down and say, hey, expand new title. And when I click OK, check out the magic that happens. Boom. So notice we've got our original data has now lengthened because instead of it being one row per ticket number, we actually now have one row per ticket number and value of new title. So for example, we start here, we can see the one master, the two miss titles, and the one misses title. 
And we're not done, of course, because this is not what we want. We've now transformed our table of per tickets into something a little bit more transactional in nature, and that's not what we want. But this is the process that we need to follow to get what we want. And what we want, of course, is for there to be a master column, a miss column, a Mrs. column, and a Mr. column per ticket number with the counts of the titles by ticket number in them. And that's very easily done. The first thing that we need to do, though, is to anticipate what Power Query is going to do. And essentially what Power Query is going to do is take this column and it's going to pivot it from this vertical orientation to a horizontal representation. And as you well know from normal pivot tables in Excel, you need some sort of aggregation function, something like an average or a sum or a count or something like that to fill in the individual cell values. So we need to seed this table with a number to use as part of that pivot and aggregation operation. We need to essentially manufacture a temporary column that we just use to sum up the number of titles. So that's easily done as well. We just go up to the ribbon, to the add column part of the ribbon, and we're gonna add a custom column. And that brings up the dialogue here. And what I'm gonna do here is just create a new custom column called new title count. And this is gonna sound kind of silly, but this is what we need to do right now. And all we're gonna do is just populate this with the value of one, because we know each row has a count of one, exactly one title. So we just put a bunch of ones down as column, boom, just like this. And now we're ready to take this particular column and pivot it from the vertical orientation to the horizontal representation. And then we can ask Power Query to sum up the new title count, and then it'll fill in the cells by ticket number, how many of each title showed up in the ticket group. Okay, so this is, this is gonna be awesome. So I just click on this and I need to go back to transform because I'm transforming this column of data here. So I click on transform in the ribbon and then I go ahead and click on pivot column. This is awesome sauce right here, right? So I click on pivot and that brings up another dialogue. And the dialogue says, hey Dave, cool. I'm going to create a set of columns from the values in the new title. And I need to know what values you want me to put in the cells of these new columns that I'm creating for you. And we say, okay, cool. Let's go to the advanced options here. And we can see here that if we use the ticket column for the values, it defaults to count because as we know, it's a category, it's not a number. Now here's the thing. If you use a column in this particular Power Query operation, it'll disappear from the resulting table because the values will get sucked up, if you will, into the pivot. And we don't want that. That's why we created this column, new title count, and notice that it defaults to sum because it recognizes that new title count is a numeric column, and this is exactly what we want. This new title count will disappear. It'll get absorbed, sucked up, if you will, into the pivot operation and just leave us these beautiful columns based on our title names with the counts of the passengers in each ticket group. So I click okay, boom, look at that. I got my Mr. column. I got my Mrs. column, my Miss column, and my master column. And for example, as we saw in the previous video, ticket number 1601 had seven passengers, all with the title of Mr. And look at that. Awesome. We get exactly what we want. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look at it, Power Query auto populates missing values with null here, right? Null implies a missing value, the lack of value. But we, what we really want here is zero because these are the counts, right? There are zero miss title, misses titles, excuse me, in this particular ticket group. So all we need to do is just click on Mr., hold down your shift key, and then click all the way over to master and highlight all four of these columns. And that's how they're all highlighted in green. Awesome. And then all we do is right click and then select replace values from the context menu here. And we get a dialog and we say, hey, look, Find everywhere in these four columns where you find a null, place that bad boy with a zero, please. Click OK, and voila, look at that. We have now created four new features on our ticket grouping query that tells us not only about how many people were traveling on the ticket, what was their average fare per passenger on the ticket, but we also know the breakdown by title of how many types of people were in that ticket group. And this is gonna be awesome because what we'll do in the next video is we will take this table of data 
and we will join it back up with the original table so that each passenger will have these new columns added and it'll say, hey, look, Bob Jones, totally making that up, traveled with seven people on his ticket group and they all have the title of Mr. And that's gonna allow us to do even more powerful analyses. When the next video is ready in the tutorial series, it will show up either here or here. And in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll put up a couple of videos around Excel data analysis on my channel that you might find interesting. If you're finding this tutorial useful, would you do me a big favor and just go ahead and click that like button? That'll help me out big time with the YouTube algorithm. I hope you're enjoying the content. I hope you're finding Power Query immensely useful. And until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.